This measurement has been performed to illustrate that it doesn't matter what you choose for your energy step size, provided your energy step size describes the peak well, then we ought to be able to calculate in XPS a quantification based on different step sizes. So if I illustrate this using these oxygen peaks, I will display the bins. I will also background subtract them and offset these so that you can see that these oxygen peaks have been measured using a range of different step sizes. So we have a 0.1 EV step size, a 0.2 and a 0.3 EV step size. And all three of these for this particular peak, the, the sufficient number of steps even at 0.3 to well define the shape of this peak. So regions have been defined so that we can calculate the area from these oxygen peaks. And we'll do this in terms of the custom report. We'll just display the counts per second EV. And actually, I can do that if I use the option for including the standard deviation. And let's just calculate the standard deviation for these so that when I display the report, you can see that values have been calculated in counts per second EV. These have been normalized for the transmission, the escape depth correction, and also the relative sensitivity factors. And you can see the uncertainty in these areas are fairly consistent, independent of the step size. The first two have produced almost identical counts per second EV, while the third one is slightly less. If you see a result like that, then you might want to go back and have a look at your data again, as in this case. So I'll turn off the, the stack display, and you can see that the blue one, and let me just illustrate what the blue one is by using the sample ID as the display option. And also, I'll return this to drawing lines. I will put points as well. So you can see now that we have three oxygen spectra and physically the blue curve, which is the 0.1, is indeed a smaller peak than the other two, which are equivalent. Hence the report which indicated this, that we were calculating the counts per second EV to be the, almost identical for the 0.2 and 0.3 and the 0.1, the only reason this is different is because the peak itself is different. These data are a survey measurement. The measurement has been performed in two sections. And when you overlay these data in the active tile, it's not at all clear why you would perform a measurement in, in such a way. However, when you convert to intensity rather than counts per second, you can see that there is a difference between the two measurements. If we look at the acquisition parameters, we can see that the first one was performed at 404.2 milliseconds, while the second one, each acquisition bin was collected for four times longer than the, than the first VAMAS block. And the reason for doing that is we have oxygen 1S here, which is a relatively intense peak. And so we can collect this for less time and still get a reasonable signal to noise. However, when you look at the peaks of interest that are at high kinetic energy, the cross sections and the response of the instrument are such that the signal to noise here, if we acquired at the same, for the same time as the oxygen 1S, the signal to noise would not be good and the precision would be impaired as a result. So if we were going to use this peak here, for example, to do a quantification, then we would want to have comparable signal to noise between the oxygen and this magnesium 2P peak. So let's create a region on this one. And this is a magnesium 2P. There it is. So let's bring up a region and create. So that 
gives us a region for the magnesium 2P. And similarly, we need to create a region for the oxygen 1S. We don't have a, a direct link between a peak from a survey measurement and the element library. So I'll bring up the element library and say create again to indicate that I'm using an oxygen 1S. And so I can then select both of these regions, use the report spec page and produce a standard report to show the quantification between these two.